I read the Bible from the beginning to the end, and I don't know what to do next. If we've read the Bible that is inspired by God and written by men, why do I think and feel the same way after reading it in its entirety? First things first, the Bible is not to be read as a book, because a book is something you may read a handful of times and put away. The way the Word of God should be approached is as a life-altering decision. Now, I understand that some people may disagree with this because it places too strong of an emphasis on the individual than the overarching lessons of God. But I beg to differ. The thought to read is a call to change. And I would like everyone to know that it is possible to improve their lives and gain a personal walk with God. But let's continue to talk about why it's not too harsh to consider the word of God life altering when you read it. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it mentions how the reader should rightly divide the word of truth. Thus, we are warned not to intentionally mishandle or misuse the word of God. The carefulness described in dividing the word of truth makes all the difference because a message in the word of God prompting one to change could be misconstrued by a curious consumer as God calling them bad or even evil for their doings. One may even read the word of God to mock further pushing believers to doubt in the word of God. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 6-7, through 7, Uzzah is killed by God for mishandling the ark of God, prompting fear in the whole assembly, thus reminding them the instruction of how the ark of God should be handled. David recalls his faults and calls upon the chosen Levitical priesthood to handle the ark of God on their shoulders when moving it from place to place as they are once instructed. So, yes, Reading the Word of God is that important. And when you decide to read the Word of God, read it carefully, with no prejudice. It is the Word of Truth, and you will benefit from applying it to your daily life. The ultimate questions one should ask if they're unsure of if they really want to be changed by the Word of God is, am I ready to change? Am I tired of the same drama and challenges associated with my current decision-making processes? Am I worth more than the result of sin? Am I tired of the same outcomes in life? Anything outside of these questions lends only to curiosity, and curiosity can result in damaging an individual that is not ready for change. Why? Because a lot of the thought processes of God are not common to man. In this way, the Word of God needs to be considered as wisdom and not as an opinion or secondary option. This is a surefire way to gain the intent behind the message of the Word of God. That said, there are chapters in our lives we're not ready to revisit. People we're not ready to face. Feelings we're not ready to let go of. Even pain may feel like a safe haven to someone not accustomed to love. Faith is what's needed to apply the Word of God in our lives. And without faith, the Word of God will remain just another book you've read. Reading the Word of God in one week makes you no wiser than before you read it. Because completion doesn't prompt promotion in God. The same way works alone can't get you into heaven. Faith with works is what sparks change in an individual because you're eventually deciding to replace your current decision-making processes with the Word of God, thus yielding a more favorable result. Such thoughts obscure the reason why someone wants to come to God. Let's face it, people in such instances are shocked and at the same time curious about how a person they thought they knew was capable of such a drastic change. Such one may further conclude that the Word of God is some sort of bandage or makeup that helps disguise one's faults and pain, persuading themselves that such cover-ups are needful, even going as far as to call such cover-ups the right thing to do, thus accompanying them on their spiritual yet personal pursuit to serve God. Bad, bad, bad idea. This is another form of curiosity that may end in both of you forsaking the word of truth as you confine in the comfort of past feelings and thoughts of how you believe the world should work. Jesus mentions in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, how we should take up his cross daily and follow after him. 
The essence in the message is not in seeing a cross for God in the middle of the walkway, awaiting someone to move it, but instead it prompts reflection upon one's own self as your attention shifts from where you were headed to where God wants you to be. And there are instances where leader intervention is needed. Why? Because every challenge you face doesn't have to be alone. And a good leader will help you and look for nothing in return because he's doing the work of God. The word of God speaks about the word being sharper than a two-edged sword. That said, when you submit yourself to the power of God, you're trusting in the process that he will work on your life. The word of God cleans us up, but we can't be lost in the message and forget that there is some work that's required of us. And that's a good thing. Why you may ask? Because it makes you a part of the solution. And if by chance you're in a situation that prompts a quick yet difficult decision, you feel empowered to make said decision without feeling helpless and inaccurate. God bless.